not. And we see that the donkey then, um, as it's representing human nature, it represents the stubbornness. It represents, uh, it, it, it can be disobedient. It can be inflexible. Uh, it can be opinionated. Some of the Bible versions call it an ass, right? And so um, you can use that also as a euphemism for a behavior, a character of a person that gets on your nerves, you know, a person that is acting in a way that is inappropriate. And so we also see that, that the donkey as it's representing human nature, the human nature we can see is contrary to what God wants or can uh, actually be stubborn based off of fear uh, and become uncooperative. So that represents, in a nutshell, just the donkey also represents the human nature. And so we see that in verse two, he tells the disciples, hey, when you go over there, you're gonna find a donkey and the donkey is tied. The donkey's not loose, it's tied. And that, uh, and he says, and it's gonna need to be loose. So the donkey was stationed somewhere. It, and when we're talking about being tied, we're talking about it was fastened to something. It was restricted. It was limited. Uh, the donkey uh, had something attached to it that wouldn't allow it uh, to be of service. So in order for the donkey to, to, to be able to be of service, to be able to carry Jesus, to be able to lead him through the throngs of people, something had to be done first. It had to be set loose. Oh, come on now, folks. And how many of us this represents, again, the donkey is representative of us. And oftentimes, Gloria. oftentimes, we, oftentimes we are tied. We are bound, right? And so, so we find what exactly are we bound to? Well, could it be guilt? Could it be that we are tied to anxiety? Are we tied to pain of the past? Are we tied and bound and restricted by insecurities? Are we, are we bound and attached to unforgiveness? Or maybe they might be obsessions and vices, drugs and alcohol, uh, uh, depend, uh, dependent to, dependent, dependency to medication, or, or maybe it's that I am so bound to my technology. Maybe I'm bound to pornography. Maybe I'm bound to the sports and I'm having a real hard time now that all the sheltering is happening and they took the sports out. I'm going crazy because I don't have my idol to entertain me and I don't know what to do, right? So, so the donkey was tied and oftentimes we are tied. And as long as we remain tied, we cannot be of service to Jesus. Okay. And so there are things that weigh us down. And so again, let me just put in a little, they say parentheses, right? When we're talking about Palm Sunday, it's not about the Easter eggs or celebrating the resurrection of Christ. It's more than that. What we are celebrating, the fact that Jesus has liberated us from our afflictions, from our curses, and he's offering to us an opportunity for him to gain control, for him to literally uh, shit himself on us and be the ones to lead us so that we can become vessels that are of service to Jesus. But we can't do that when we are tied. So again, in order to experience, see, you got to experience Jesus. This is not by some theoretical mind thing that you just think, or a, a momentary sensation where you just get the Goo, goosebumps. No, this is a daily experience with Jesus. And so in order to experience, experience Jesus on a daily basis in our lives, we must loose ourselves from all that weighs us down. Hebrews 12.1, we find, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Think about it. What is tying you down? 
my internet connection is unstable. I apologize, but if we go, we're going to get back on in the name of Jesus. So what is, what is slowing you down? What is weighing you down? What is tying you that you can't be of service to Jesus? And you have to understand that we have been created with purpose. We have been created and we have been determined to, to be of purpose, to ride along with Jesus, to follow him in his journey to Jerusalem. For what reason? To go all the way to the very holy place where God dwells. If we go back and talk about the tabernacle, and, and we see that there used to be a veil and only one that could go into the Holy of Holies was the high priest. But when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, that tore open and now we get to have access to enter into the Holy Holy and have fellowship and be able to experience the presence of our mighty father. And so we see in order for this to happen, we must be willing to be disciples of Jesus, not just a mere believer that sits in church and, and has its own corner, has its own designation. And every Sunday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, you sit in the same place and you leave the same and you, and, and, and there's no transformation. There's nothing. No, you don't want to be just a Bible-based believer. You want to be a disciple. You want to be, you want to be developed. You want to be equipped and, and, and trained and empowered. And, and, and not only with power, but have understanding because you need to understand what it's like to be governed by the spirit of God. You have to have understanding to where God is calling you to. You just don't do things because you do things. Oh, I feel like this. Oh, I feel like, no, the Holy Spirit is guiding us each step of the way and we must serve God with understanding. So we want to be disciples, mature Christians, not Christians that are in the bottle fed, in, in, in the milk for, for so long. We need to have meat. We need to grow strong. We need to have a new level of revelation unfolded, unveiled unto us by the illumination power of the Holy Spirit so that we can have a level of understanding of spiritual maturity of who we are in Christ, of what we're called to do, to become a disciple and minister to other people, to be of service for Jesus, that he can ride on me and do as he pleases, that he can have his perfect will done in my life and that I could be of use for the master's table and minister to others. I can be that donkey that I can then go ahead, Jesus, have your way, do whatever you need to do with my life. But in order for me to become a disciple, there must be things I must do. The word of God says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, if anyone wants to be a disciple, you must, you must, you must take up your cross. You cannot be a disciple without first taking up your cross. Second, you got to deny yourself. You got to deny your passion you got to deny your wishes and your dreams and all that you plan. You put it to the wayside and you put Christ first. You deny yourself and then you follow Christ. You follow him. You are following Christ. You don't, you don't rule yourself, but you follow Christ. And so we can't fulfill. We cannot fully commit. And that's the problem a lot of the church have. They want to serve God, but when it comes time to dedicate, when it comes time to commit, you can't do that. Do you know why? Ask me why. Why? Why? Thank you. You got to ask, why, Grizel? Why? Because, because we're tied. We're bound. We will not fully commit to God. I talked on Monday, you can't serve two gods. You got to make a choice of who you're going to give yourself to. There is no such thing as a mediocre Christian and that's acceptable before the Lord. No, the Lord rejects it because anything that you have, a, 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 a lukewarmness, the Lord rejects, spits it out. So you got to make a decision to say finally bye-bye to what's been tying you and give it its back and no more. Renounce it, reject it, break away with those old covenants and turn to Christ and begin to follow Christ, begin to obey Christ and make him your full, you'll be a, your allegiance, your loyalty to one God. So we cannot fully commit to God when we are tied, when we have attachments, when we're being weighed down by our sins. So we need to be released. We need to be loosed. We need to be surrendered of our burdens. And it is only then that we will be 
free from the pressures of trying to worship and serve, but at the same time trying to hold our stuff. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been that you're trying to worship God, that you're trying to serve God, but you're trying to hold on to your ugly, that you're trying to hold on to those bad habits, that you're trying to hold on to that resentment and anger? You can't serve God freely. and, and, and You can't. you got to let go of that so you can worship wholeheartedly and be of service to God. So Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, was providing all of us the roadmap to overcome. Now watch this. You know, the donkey is another name. It's called jackass, right? Okay. So I'm using it within that context. Jesus was providing us the roadmap to overcome the jackass in all of us. His mission, Jesus' mission, was transformative work. And he was, he was literally, he was the expression of God himself. And he said in John chapter 12, verse 24, he said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. That brought to me the memory not too long ago when we uh, studied on authority and we talked about how that kernel must fall and die. Do y'all remember that? Yes. And so if that kernel doesn't fall to the ground and it doesn't die, it doesn't become dormant, it will, become, it will remain a single grain. But if you give it an opportunity for it to just slough off that old shell for it to finally break open life then life will it will will arise from it the life that is found in jesus christ and only then will you be able to bear much fruit jesus is coming and he wants us to be fruit bearing trees if you are not a fruit bearing tree the day will come when you will be examined and then you will be cursed May God help us that in our life, we would demonstrate true fruits, fruits of righteousness, fruits of repentance, the fruit of the spirit. Come on now, the fruit of holiness. There's a lot of fruit that we got to cultivate in our life. And in order for fruit to be demonstrated and cultivated in our life, we must die. Do I get an amen for that? So to be, to be united, okay, uh, means that we are willing to die of self, okay? I'm sorry, to be untied, to, 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 to have that, that tie, that, that whatever's holding us, right? That attachment, that weighing down, that sin, whatever is tying us to be untied, to be released, to be let loose, then means that we are willing to die of self. We're willing to let go of who we are presently. Guess what? Trying to keep up with the image, trying to keep yourself that, that you have a name for yourself. Well, guess what? That goes out the door. I'm willing for myself for for I don't want a name I just want to die so Jesus Christ can be the one that lives in me and so some of us are looking to be illuminated some of us want that our eyes of our understanding be enlightened well let me tell you something we will not be able to be enlightened or elevated and transform into a higher level of godly understanding and, and, and have God's presence in us while we remain tied. It just won't happen. So if we want to have a new level of understanding, if we want the Holy Spirit to illuminate us, if we, if we want more of that, we need to be willing to surrender, release, and get rid of those things that weigh us down, those things that are tying us. So Jesus, we see he was a perfect role model for us. He was willing to forsake his self-survival and his own agenda to let God be fully expressed through him. That's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, the place of crushing, the place of pressing, Jesus said to God three times, pass this cup from me. It's too much, Lord. But then he would his will would break and he would say, but let your will be done, not mine, okay? So the donkey in us, okay, is tied to so much stuff that is perishing in this world. And so the greatest challenge to become transformed into Christ's likeness so that we may be of his service 
is our list of untouchables. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on now. We have a list of, we just say, Lord, you can have all this except that. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, Lord, you can go into every area of my life except that room. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we harbor things like we think God don't see that. And that's the stuff that limits us. And that's the stuff that restricts us into walking into our breakthroughs, into walking into our destinies, into walking into the presence of the most high God. And so these are the things that we often don't want God to touch. And so just like the donkey who is stubborn, uncooperative, opinionated, and disobedient, we too have a nature that must be loosed in the name of Jesus. Again, we see in verse two, we talked about it, that, that when we're talking about uh, being loose, uh, Jesus told his disciples, go get the donkeys. You'll have to untie them. You've got to loose them. you got to loose them and bring them to me. And, and so the, I talked about the Old Testament, the New Testament, the word of God. And, and, and so the word of God and, and, and the Holy Spirit comes to free us from the bondages that restrict, that limit, that tie us to the old man, to the natural man. But, but, but the word of God, uh, when it comes and it is received in our life and it is engrafted into the inner core of our spirits of our hearts it renews our thoughts it changes our way of living it redirects our compass and we begin to truly then live and serve as god has wished for us let me tell you what there is power in the word of god i've provided you in the outline verses but really quick we know that that that, that the word of god is alive and a double-edged sword it pierces us asunder. We know that the word of God is truth. We know that the word, uh, not just the logos, but the rhema, the rhema word of faith has potential to awaken our spirit man. And it is by this living and enduring word that we are able to be made new. We are able to be transformed and we are able to be cleansed. Thank you, Jesus, for the living word of God, which we will not reject checked like Hosea in 4, 6 says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge, but we will not reject the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We will come and we will embrace it. We will have it and live it on a daily basis and we will allow it to renew our thoughts. We will allow it to bring order into our lives and we will use the sword of the spirit in the name of Jesus to break off everything that the enemy has placed in our life to tie us and weigh us down in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So the entry, the entry into Jerusalem, verse six and eight, the entry into Jerusalem. Do you have any questions right now? I apologize. Any questions? Any questions? I'm trying to go real quick here for you guys. I apologize. So we see that um, both state that the disciples laid their clothes on the donkeys, but so did the multitude. So the, the, we see that the two disciples, they laid their clothes on the donkey. The people around were seeing what the disciples were doing. And guess what? Monkey see, monkey do, right? What did the people begin to do? The people began to lay their cloaks, lay their clothes, before as Jesus was coming, they laid branches, palm branches, right? So give me a minute to help help you understand what this symbolizes. So they spread the garments, they spread the cloaks, uh, so Jesus would be able to come through with the donkey. And so whenever that you hear in the scripture that something such as a garment or a cloak is being laid, it is a sign of homage. It is a sign of honor. It is a sign of submission. And it's basically representing a demonstration that one is laying of one self down. Laying of one self down down. And so the people were literally, yes, Mr. Isaac, you have a question. What does a life of submission 
looks like. Did you what hear? does a life of submission look like? Like submitted to? Yes. yes. Submitted to what? So I'm and going God. to, okay, so I'm going to give you an example that applies to you right now. Is that okay? So, so the Bible says that us children are to honor our mother and our father. So when I am submitted to the word of God, I'm making sure that I'm obeying the word and I'm applying it to my life. So if mom were to ask me, Isaac, can you please go clean your room? If I'm submitted to that word, okay? If I'm submitted, if I'm walking in the word, that means that I'm gonna obey my mom. I'm gonna honor her by going and doing as she asked me to do. I'm gonna go clean my room, okay? okay. That is a level of submission. You, when you submit to your mom or you submit to your dad, you're actually submitting to God because your, uh, a, your obedience and your honoring your authority figures, that that's who they are. They're your authority. They're your parents that God has placed before you to grow you in the ways of the Lord. And then your job is to submit, is to come under that authority, receive the instruction, receive um, uh, the teachings that mom and dad are giving you, and do it as God, and when you do it, you're doing it unto God. So that is how you submit to God's word. So if if you find that, even you know, um, let's say another another form of submission is to the authorities in our in our um, in our government. Okay, so if if they say you got to go to school, and you choose, nope, I don't need to go to school. Nope, I don't want to go to school then you're not submitting to the governing laws of this nation, okay? Then when you don't submit, you're actually rebelling. You're actually disobeying. And that brings, disobedience brings judgment and disobedience brings um, torment, okay? So uh -huh. submitting is obeying God. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Any more questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? No. Okay. okay. So again, it's a sign as we're, we're laying out the clothing, it's a sign of homage, submission, laying of one self down. And so it was also an acknowledgement and declaration that Jesus was the King of Kings, the promised Messiah. And so uh, those of you that I'm not sure if you know what a talit is, um, it's the prayer shawl. Okay. It's called also a cloak. All right. And many, many of the, um, giving me a uh many of the um people used that and they took it and they would lay it on the ground and so remember that the the cloak the prayer shawl had four tassels it had four corners it had four tassels attached to it and that was to remind the jewish people the nation of israel uh, all the commands that the lord had given to them the collar the collar had uh, uh some words uh, inscriptions in Hebrew, okay, uh, uh, that spelled Lord of Lords and Kings of Kings. And so when they would lay their, their prayer shawls, they would lay their cloaks, their clothing before Jesus, basically they were demonstrating with their actions and implying that Jesus was God's promised Messiah. And that's why as Jesus was coming by, they would shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. And so Hosanna comes from a Hebrew Greek word, means save now, save us. And so the people were only able to understand and look at it from an earthly level, a natural level, that Jesus was there to come and save them from the Roman uh, uh, empire and and Jesus didn't come for that Jesus was coming to destabilize a bigger throne and it was to destabilize and take the authority and the power away from Satan and to establish a new kingdom to establish now uh, the purposes of God on earth he, he so Jesus wasn't there to do their basic needs which was save us from this Roman captivity okay he was there for something more. The people were not able to understand that. So we too, we too, you and me, both of us have to spread our garments as well. And, and, and what that 
demonstrates to God is that we're willing to lay our old man down. Now, most of you guys have been baptized in water. And when you're baptized in water, you're literally putting a public faith that, that you're literally telling everyone of an internal conversion that you have had. And so you're also, when you're rising up from the waters, your old man, your old nature is left buried within that water and the new nature you take on is christ-like nature but unfortunately some of us need to go back and baptize ourselves in water again stay underwater maybe five minutes to make sure that the old man is finally that that is cut off of us those mindsets the the attitudes uh you know that that's got to come off of us because i can't say that i am a, a a believer in jesus christ is the one that sits at the at the he's got the reins of my heart when i do what i want when i want how i want and i have an attitude that it's like um okay who's lording who amen <laughs> so <laughs> So we have to put off, right, the garment of the former behavior of the old man by divesting ourselves of what? Divesting means I'm going to cut away the stuff and the junk and the things that do not that are not godly, that all stem from the flesh. What do they look like? Well, they look like, uh, let's see, envy, jealousy, strife, anger. There's so many things that come out of the flesh. And all of this, okay, we have to cut it out and we need to then put on Christ's righteousness, amen? And so he's come to clothe us with garments of salvation. And in order, in order for us to enter into the joy of what we hear, we must loose ourselves from our own thoughts and our own ways. And then we need to take in his thoughts and his ways. And we find that in the book of John chapter 12 and Ephesians chapter four, make sure that you guys look at your outline quickly. They also, the people were putting branches, palm branches, guys, it's not just, oh, okay, that's nice. No, it's significant and it's symbolic. Come on. God is in the details. God, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're experiencing. Let me tell you what, that just look at the details, be willing to push in further, be willing to trust God, be willing to let him show you his greatness because he's hidden within the details. Palm branches, uh, they were used in celebration of victory. And in King David's time, they were used to honor royalty. Come on now, people of God. And we see the perfect connection to the true identity of Jesus as King of Kings and as our high priest. And so we see that the palm tree, the palm tree takes 30 years before it gives fruit. 30 years before it gives fruit. And it's significant because it took, it would take 30 years before a man could become a high priest. Okay. But we see that the, the palm tree points us directly to Jesus Christ, who is our high priest that you'll find in Hebrews chapter four, verse 14 and 16. So they laid the garments, the cloaks down. They laid the palm branches down. All of that pointed to Jesus Christ. This entire message to you is so much Christ-centered. May you be saturated by the presence of Jesus Christ through this message. All of this that we've been talking about points us to Jesus as number one, being our Messiah. Number two, that he is not only the high priest, but he is the king of kings. And so when Jesus was sitting on the donkey and here he comes, the donkey bringing him into Jerusalem, he entered from the east gate. And this is significant because the location from where he entered uh, uh, is significant. And he's riding on a donkey and the throngs of people. Imagine, imagine those of you that have been, I can't be around like throngs of people. I get anxious. <laughs> and especially now with this COVID going around, I'm sorry, I'll stay at home. I'm all right. <laughs> but you know, 
those of you that live in Chicago, okay, Noelle, I'm going to use you as an example, okay? Nod your head if it's okay, mama. <laughs> All right? So I'm sure that you've been to the, what is it that they, they make those, um, they open a strip and they have all sorts of little restaurants. What is that? I don't remember. What is that called? That they taste the food? Oh, the Taste of Chicago. Okay. All right. So, so one day my mom said she had gone with the, my dad, you know, and my brother. So, and she said that there was so many people that they were like touching back. And I'm like, oh my Lord, I, that's too close for me. I'm like, hula hoop, hula hoop, man. I can't, I need my six feet. I'm okay with that six feet, okay? <laughs> you know, and so imagine the throngs of people because they had heard Jesus was literally like a celebrity. They had heard of all that he had been doing. And, 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 and come on, we even see the, 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 the stories when, the gospels tell us when Jesus began to multiply the bread and the fish and the loaves, how many people were there following, following, following him. So imagine this was just not one or two little three people. These were throngs of people that, that, they, that he had to get in and make a way. And so we see that they're laying the branches, they're laying the cloaks on the ground before him shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. While we have the Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin uh, uh, priests are around watching everything that's happening, okay? And so his mode of entry was very symbolic. Uh, he wasn't talking, but how many know that we talk more with our actions than with our, with, than with our own mouth, right? You can say, I love Jesus, but with your actions, you're speaking louder. And if you're living a life that is not approved, uh, you know, approved by God, that you're literally showing and stating something greater that, no, you're not, you're, you're, he's not your Lord, that you don't love him, that you're not obeying because I can see it in your behavior, in your decision, and, and the people that you associate with and, and with the places that you go into. So, so Jesus wasn't talking, but his whole demonstration spoke thousands of words. And so I'm almost done here. Give me a few minutes. So his entry was very symbolic. And so, uh, uh, with his demonstration of coming in from the east gate on a donkey, the message was, I'm coming in and I'm coming as the Prince of Peace. Okay? I'm, 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 I'm ushering in a new kingdom. And this new kingdom is one of peace because the kingdom of God is of peace. It's a peace. And that's how you know that the Lord is abiding in you because you should be experiencing the peace of Jesus every day. And anything that tries to rob that peace, you need to fight it off in the name of Jesus. A peace in your conscience, a peace in your heart. You have fellowship with God. You have fellowship with your brother and your sister. Okay. And so, but, but, but this was a great contrast because on the opposite side from the West gate, you had the Roman imperial procession of troops and cavalry that were entering the city from the West. And it was spearheaded by Pilate. Y'all remember Pilate washed his hands from Jesus. It was Pilate. And so why were they there? What was the purpose? It was to reinforce the Roman garrison that was already stationed there near the temple. Why? This was a holy week. This was the Passover. This was a major, major feast. Tons and tons of people came from all over the place to celebrate. Okay. So, so the, the, the garrisons were there. The Romans were there to establish their rule. But one big difference is while Jesus' kingdom had to be one of peace, the one that came with the Roman garrison, guess what? Their kingdom was one of violence. Their kingdom was of violence. So you had that major contrast. So to finalize, we're in the midweek, Wednesday. Friday is Good Friday. We commemorate crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Burial, Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection when Jesus Christ was resurrected. And I want you to consider everything that we've been talking about. Get my outline. We see the purpose and the detail, every aspect that Jesus went wasn't to any other village, but to the village of Bethphage. And there, 
was working at such a supernatural level. It just wasn't about getting the donkey. It was about also what was happening within the, the religious centers, the, the Supreme Court of those days and how Jesus was, was going to deal with that from a spiritual aspect. We see that, that also he retrieves. It's not only of doing something, but he was also retrieving something which was significant that was till today leaves us a message that, hey, you that are as a donkey, I, I want to loose you from all of this that, that the enemy wants to tie to you. And I want to bring you so you could be free and that you could be free, that the freedom that, that what I died for on the cross of Calvary, you can receive that freedom. You can receive that liberty. You can receive that healing so that you could be of service for me, that I can ride your, your life, that I can, I can govern and empower your life so that you could be of service to me to reach others. And the thing is that, that, that Jesus Christ's kingdom is not only a kingdom of peace, but it is a, a kingdom where we serve one another. How are you in your service level to others? How are you? How, how do you serve others even in this time? How can you serve others in this time? Are you able to serve others or are you still bound and limited and restricted and unable to be an asset for the kingdom of God? We see that Jesus is also bringing in an animal uh, to represent him, to represent the kingdom, the royalty. Uh, uh, and then we see that he has his two disciples, which we looked at that we need the, we need both the Old Testament and the New Testament. We need them both in our life. We, we need to have the word of God in our life and we need to have the operating power of the Holy Spirit activated in us, illuminating us. But in order for us to reach and enlightenment in Jesus Christ and understanding who he is, we need to be willing to surrender these things and get rid of those things with the help of the Holy Spirit. We see that then he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. And then as he's entering into Jerusalem, we see that the garments that are placing before him, may, be, may we be willing as Jesus is constantly passing by us daily in our lives, wanting to have fellowship, wanting to meet with us, that we would be willing to lay out our garments, our old man, push it aside and say, Lord, let your will be done in my life. That we would be willing to honor Jesus Christ as Messiah. He wasn't only a, a prophet, but he was also the high priest who still today, he is in heaven interacting with the father interceding on our behalf he's our high priest we don't have to go to man to confess we go to jesus christ to confess jesus christ was the door that opened the way so that we would be reconciled so that we would have fellowship and communion with the presence of our heavenly abba jesus christ is our high priest but he is coming back he's coming back he's coming back He's the Messiah, the Lord and Savior. He's the high priest, which makes intercession on our behalf. But boy, oh boy, you better get ready because he is the King of King and Lord of Lord. And when he returns, he's not returning on a donkey. He's returning on a white horse. And he's coming to judge. He's coming to do war with those that have rejected and wanted to do nothing with him. And you'll find that in the book of Revelation. It's on your outline. So I want you to meditate on this lesson. I want you to grasp and, and chew and pray. And if there's an area that you know that you've been holding back, that you've said, Lord, you can't have this. Why don't you be willing to surrender that? That today will be the day that you say, I want to cut those ties so that I could be free, that I could be of service, and I could be of good use for my master. The Lord is needing men and women. He needs men and women. Remember, I've told you before, I'll tell you again. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit cannot do anything apart from us. We are code laborers. That means that they need our cooperation. They need our 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 willingness to work with, with God, with his will, with his agenda. And he's looking for volunteers who would be willing, humble enough 
to set aside their agenda and open their lives up and say, have your will, Lord, because God can only work through men and women, through children. He can work through us if we're opening, opening our heart. And this this Palm Sunday that just passed and we're leading up into our, our getting into the Good Friday and into uh, Resurrection Sunday. May you make the final choice the, and you make that, that, that you will within yourself and say, you know what, Lord, whatever is tying me, I'm going to release it so that you can, you, that I, that, that it's not about my agenda, that it's not about my needs, that it's not about, that I'm not going to make it about me, that, but I'm going to make it all about you and that my life would be one that can honor and glorify the Lord and, and truly be a life of worship and follow Jesus' example and be able to be used here on earth because God can't do anything apart from us. He needs you, woman of God, man of God, child of God. He needs you. It doesn't mean that he's going to use, you know, you probably think, well, I don't know how to, how to teach. I don't know how to preach, but you know how to give encouraging words. You know how to pray for somebody else. You know how to send a, send a text to, an, to just encourage someone. You know, those kinds of things you can do. And those are the things that we need. Now in this time, where is the church? Are we seeking each other? Are we, are we looking to encourage each other, pray, and staying connected with each other? Are, are we demonstrating to our neighbors, checking in on them if they're elderly? You know, yeah, we can be six feet away, but just making sure that we are being the church in this generation. That's what Jesus Christ is looking for. So this weekend, as you, you know, on Friday, whatever message you, you know, from your churches, whatever you're gonna listen to, pay attention. Make it Christ-centered focus. That when you do something, make it Christ-centered motive. That when you do something to someone, make sure that your motives are right, that you want to honor God and you're not expecting anything in return. Because you know what? God sees everything and he will be the one that repays you. Amen? And let's glorify Jesus Christ. Let's be willing to be the donkey who was willing to say, right on me, Jesus. Go ahead. Take over. It would be my pleasure that you would, your will would be established in my life. And through this vessel, you can manifest your power, your glory, and many more lives can be transformed by your word through this vessel. Amen. Any questions right now? Any questions? You guys look so thinkative. <laughs> All right. So we don't got no questions? No? Okay, so my connection still is unstable. So really quick, okay? Adam, tell me one thing you got from this lesson or one thing you want to share or feedback or comment. Um, well, there, was, there was a lot of things that stuck out, like, um, like right from the beginning, because I myself didn't really know the whole significance of Palm Sunday. It was never something that was ever... taught and I was like oh I, I know this is gonna be a good lesson and so like just throughout the whole thing I mean I guess the donkey itself the symbolism of of service that really stuck out to me because I I myself wondered before why a donkey like what what is the reason what is the symbol like there has to be a symbol because yeah. I've noticed that myself when I'm reading throughout the bible like there's a specific thing and I never I guess I don't take the time like I should to see the significance of that one thing, you know, wherever it is that I'm reading. And this happened to be one of them where I read this the other day about the donkey and I'd wondered why a donkey and, yeah. Yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Taffy, one thing. Um, with me, um, I actually, I really stuck on when, you, um, when you were talking about when Jesus told God, um, Father, why you have for for sake in me? To like, not really understand what he meant by that when he. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just dawned on me that I was like, oh, so he, Jesus did feel alone. Yes. At one point in his life, so I'm like, oh, so he has felt things that we have felt. Yes. And, oh, yeah. So that's just pretty much just, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Claudia, one thing, Claudia.
Oh, I think maybe I lost her. All right, Maritza, one thing. Um, I guess what stuck out to me most was in order for the donkey to um, to be of service, he had to be set loose. I don't know how many times I've read that scripture and not ever think about, okay, he was just set loose, that it, that's it, but never really truly realized the significance of that. And in our lives, we 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 feel like we're stuck, but that's because we haven't set ourselves loose from other things that take away our focus from our relationship with with God. So that, and then we wonder why we're we're stuck. Well, it's because we're still not set loose. We're not able to serve Him, serve uh, or be servants in a uh, proper way or an efficient way because we're still over here stuck, tied to other things that have no value yeah. to me. Thank you, thank you, very good. Noelle, one thing. Um, for me, I think um, when you were describing the donkey, I felt I had been, or um, I was the donkey too when you mentioned that um, they're stubborn. Yes, they're stubborn. And I felt um, before I got to know Jesus, I was a very stubborn <laughs> person. Um, I wanted to keep my ways. I wanted to, to go with, with what my family knew, what the traditions and everything. And, and I thought that I knew Jesus. I knew that, I, I thought that, that that's what it was, which it wasn't. Um, and I feel that so I, I I when I gave them that opportunity um, to actually go forward and actually hear his word, read it, um, and get to know him better, that's when I felt that he let me lose. And that's when when I got to know him more. Praise Jesus. And I feel that that was like the resurrection Sunday for me. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Noelle. Praise God. Irene, share something, Mama. Um, for me, what stuck out was when you were talking about when Jesus cleansed the house and healing began. So it's like, you know, for us as well, you know, once we allow him to cleanse us and get everything uh, ugly out of us, yeah. you know, so many things happen yes 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 absolutely that's very powerful thank you yes thank you thank you praise god Fanny. one thing mm. for me i think it was that we need to uh, lose ourselves and born, be born again because we need to be fruitful and do something yes for god but we cannot do it if we don't do it like if we don't show a testimony we cannot do anything it will not make um like an impact on other people's lives because we are not living by that yes yes so it really talked to me because jesus i've been having some problems with that So, yeah, it was hard. Thank you so much, Fanny. Thank you so much. Uh, Evelyn. Hold on, I gotta unmute. There we go. Uh, the, like the representation of the fig tree and then how that represents the Sanhedrin, but then how Jesus had to go to the Sanhedrin place to have his kingdom yes. his his yeah. royalty like confirmed like that in and of itself is like wow like i never i never even saw that and when i you know when it came in i was just like wow like yeah. just the bigger picture of it all like jesus had to go through those the process 
yes. because all along God wanted to have fellowship with his people. It was, when you look at it from the big picture, it just blows your mind. And I guess just looking at it from a different lens, it's not just, you know, Jesus had to do this, 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 and this. No, it's God was always wanting to get that connection, that bridge built again, Absolutely. but it only had to happen through Jesus Christ in, in a very specific. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that was, Amen. that's Praise amazing. God. That's amazing. I didn't know that at all. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Holy spirit. Uh, um, Isaac, one thing. Um, so it was crazy how he was walking, but they wouldn't accept him how he was. So when he got the donkey, they they all accepted him. They were all putting the clothes down, the palm branches, everything. Uh huh. So you you found that pretty interesting. Mhm. Mm yeah. All right. You want to share one more? What was the other one you had? Um, you can't serve two gods. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one. That's right. You can't serve two gods. Thank you so much, Isaac. Uh, OC, one thing. Also, just adding to what Isaac said, you know, you can't serve two gods. Um, you know, putting God first, I know it could always be a challenge. Yeah. Is because yeah. um, just so the routines and and routines and just other things that we may put first before God can can take over our lives. Yes. And sometimes yeah. we could be a little blind and, you know, continue thinking that we're walking on the right path, but, you know, we gotta, gotta get baptized again and let, like you said. Yeah, <laughs> right? Hold on there for five minutes. All right, who needs to go get baptized again? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go get in the water again, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh Gotta my god. Get in the water again. And, That's uh, right. Thank the you. And it's yeah, true. Thank you guys. We have to, you know, the, this is what the word of God. That's why it's so imperative in our lives because it brings light into the areas we think we're okay, but then it shows us, no, 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 no. You're by, being bound by something and you're not noticing, right? And the word yeah. of God comes and and shows us, and and we get to make those adjustments. And thank God that we still have the opportunity to do that, right? Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Claudia, before you disappear, tell us one thing you got. I know my internet is I so know, it's bad. bad. Um, well, I have to say that it was a beautiful class. Every detail that you explained, it was just, wow. Like, I, I will have to watch this. Um, I, will, I will have to say that I love when you explain again that uh, when God, um, como, you said something como when God enjoyed to, um, no fue la pregunta que tuvo, um, ¿quién, ¿quién tuvo esa pregunta? No recuerdo. Which question, honey? Maritza. Alguien, it was Maritza. Maritza. She oh, asked, yes. About the, the about God being, yeah. Yeah. About birth. Yes, I love that. That that is so powerful. And what uh, Dan explained too. Yes. I love that too. It yes. was just everything. It was a beautiful, beautiful class. Thank you, Praise Jesus, for that. I enjoyed it so much. Praise Jesus for that. Amen. 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 So uh, we thank God. We give Him and Him alone the honor and the glory. He's, he said that we're going to get new wine and he's, he said there was some new stuff coming this year. And so I'm expecting, and so I, you know, we need to just prepare and be, you know, sensitive and be willing to um, open ourselves to, so the Holy Spirit can really fill us with, um, which what is already in the word, but he has to unveil it to us and that we could cleanse ourselves and, and get things straightened out so that we can receive this word. And we can begin to see really the scales will be taken off of our eyes and we can come into uh, greater depths of God's truth. Amen. And our lives will be enriched and our faith will grow. Amen. And so thank you so much uh, for, for all, you know, all these interruptions with the, with the internet. Don't know, don't know. I'll be making a phone call, you know, with my people, <laughs> but um, while we're going to, 
close out now. I'm going to ask Adam if you could please close us out in prayer, please. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for this day, for this moment, for this opportunity, Lord, for allowing us to oh, be um, gathered in your name, Lord, for we are gathered in your spirit and we are thank you, Jesus. aligned as one, as your body, as your people. Yes. And I just thank you, Lord, for this. I uh, Right now, I, I pray, Father God, that um, as we disconnect, Father, that this word that has been sown in our hearts, Father, that it mm. continues grow in our yes. hearts and that it bear good fruit father i pray O oh lord for our servant leaders grizel and dan father i pray lord that you continue to guide them continue to use them continue to uh bless them lord father that they may continue forward with this with their ministry father Thank bless you. their ministry ever so abundantly okay. i pray O oh lord that you bless each and every single one of us father uh with this word and we, as uh, we continue to uh grow grow spiritually father yes. mature and i ask and i pray these things in the almighty and all powerful name of jesus Amen. 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 So I pray you all have a good Friday and uh, enjoy the service that you're going to tune into. Be blessed. We send you lots of hugs, virtual hugs. Okay. And we're praying for you and interceding for you. And you guys can always uh, call us or text us if you need anything. We're here to service you. Okay. We love you guys. Praying for you guys. Uh, have a good evening. Okay. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. What happened? Bye. Thank you. Yeah, I know. You didn't come back to this. Goodbye. <laughs> what happened?